is trying to put down the mission statement. Our mission is really that we let me just recognize this because I'm a daughter of a parish chief. Okay? I, I am what I am because my father was a parish chief. So I have a lot of experience with uh, making things work right from childhood. I used to sit in for my mom as well as three years when my father used to meet communities. That's why my heart is with the communities. So our mission is to offer local families technical study services, outreach and research and more opportunities in areas which we considered until now the key blocks, or as we call it in TV, the key elephants that were stopping us to go to the market. Now we put down production, sustainable production. By production, we don't mean production in industry, but production of the bananas. When we came, they were told us that there were enough bananas. When we went down, we found that if we started processing yesterday, the bananas actually would be there. So we started doing this ourselves through my production. So the first issue that we looked at is the handcuffed production. My colleague, Professor Dante, will be around to answer some questions on that. The other one is, now when we have enough production, even as people are saying in bananas, that they so much, they are getting right. What next? The way we are used in Uganda, and the Japanese counter that told me better, when he visited us in Australia, she said, this is strange for us from Japan. I said, why? Because we are used to get raw materials from Africa, not to get finished products. Okay? We have positioned ourselves as people who supply raw materials, we get it, and others finish and send us the finished product. We get it. So we have this bottleneck of my addition. Then the third one, there are places where we add money, but you cannot get to the market because of quality because of not knowing where, because of lack of uh, posi proper positioning into the market, but also because of lack of uh, vulcanization, you know, of the produce to make sustainable supply chains. Then thirdly, we looked at in, indeed the quality and safety because most of the trade laws in the world that govern most of the key markets that make most countries matter are really governed by laws that are beyond our communities. And that's why you need us professors. Not so? Some of you say, what are professors doing in the marketplace? We are come to help you get the quality and safety issues correct. Okay? I thought you would clap. Then, <laughs> we finally said, after we've done all this, if the community have got the production right, if they are able to add value, if they are able to think everything they do as a business and they are ready to go to the marketplace and the quality and safety is correct, how are they going to do it? Then we looked at the third the, the last, which was why we have Dr. Kawangole in place, how we can get technology tested, packaged appropriately, and divested to communities. So this is, in a nutshell, what our mission in using, really, the banana sector as the model for this. Allow me therefore to just run through what how this model 
is working. Because we, we pegged it to what I would call, in the context of what we are learning this afternoon, innovative model of supply chain management under the banana industry. We segmented the banana industry into three big sections. The primary value addition, the secondary value addition, we have to write as fast as I'm speaking, and the tertiary value addition or the commercialization. Okay? And when we looked at it, we realized that most of our focus in Africa, anyway, is through the primary value addition. The problem is that even the primary value addition is not done at source. Okay? You know what I mean at source? The source is the farm gate. You get it? Because we're not doing the primary value addition at source. There's still a lot of waste. There's a lot of uh, drug and there's poor volume realization. You get it? So we put our minds together and we realize that many of the things the investors are trying to do at primary value addition level is properly planned and aggregated. And if the communities could be empowered to yield value-added products at farm gate that is modified as a community processing cooperative would have better bargaining power and win-win across the supply chain. So we modified our supply chain so, uh, source from a farm gate to a community processing unit. Okay, CPU. Remember my title is Innovative Model of Supply Chain Management. And we are using the cascade of processing, primarily, secondary, and tertiary to get there. And we are saying that the traditional source is the farm gate, isn't it? The problem of the traditional approach is the farm gate brings a lot of exploitation to the farmer. It creates a lot of middlemen. It creates a lot of inefficiency. And when you want to do the way Madivan does it, then you may even wipe out the farms of what? Of individuals. You get it? In a bid to get the volumes that you want. Because farmers, if they don't see the money, they are going to be very inefficient. General, allow me to say that farmers are not fools. However much you make them produce, if it's not bringing profit, they will remain inefficient. So that's what happens in the traditional model, which I call the colonial model, the production was concentrated to the farmers. Each farmer was to sell as a unit. Eventually they had some cooperatives, but the cooperatives were to aggregate and even take away the profits from the farmers. In many cases, you find that the farmer, even if he was in the cooperative, would not know the selling, final selling prices which are taking place at the end. So we say we cannot draw into a fresh perishable commodity like banana a source which is a farm gate, which is a unitary person. Because we had quality issues, we had technology issues, we had sustainability issues, which you could not do with one person. So we formed in our mind what we call the community processing unit. 
the community processing unit was for us to obligate the family of farm, farmer, banana farmers that were going to work with us. First of all, to aggregate volumes of, coll of, of collection of bananas. And when these volumes grew because of improved productivity through our interface, their interface with us, to eventually lead to them the ability to add primary value. In our banana model, the primary value is basically what you all know. is peeling, washing, slicing, and what you don't have, which we have, is a drying facility. But actually, if the heat was like this every year, 